Hello and welcome again to, wait, whose show is this? I am the Techno Blue Ranger. If you can hear it, I have some techno music playing in the background. Again, for those of you old like me, you remember the Power Rangers. Well, I'm just kind of a more modern version. I'm the Halloween version. I am the Blue Techno Ranger. Again, because I have my white, my blue, my gray. I'm all ready for Halloween. I'd like to wish everyone out there in YouTubeville a happy and safe Halloween. Um, we have a special show for you today, or I guess on his show. I don't know where he went to. I think he went to go collect cans or something. I don't know. But right now, um, let's see. Here. Oh, he is he, he actually he actually left some notes for me. Look at this. I, I do like it when I have a script to follow. That's that, this makes any actor's life a lot easier. So you are watching the Hobo and the Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. I am the Techno Blue Ranger. I don't know if you can hear it, but I do have some techno Halloween music playing in the background. It's probably better that you don't hear it because he said he has he is a he's a copyright something. I have no idea what a copyright thing is. I do my own original work. But this is my first wrestling show, so I'd say hello to everyone. Um, it says here in the notes, and right here somewhere, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And he even says he rewards people with special shout-out videos to those who actually do either comment or subscribe or even email. And the email here, he left the email here somewhere. Oh, yes, here it is. It is hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Again, this is a special wrestling show. Um, it is Halloween, so it's time to celebrate some fun stuff. And we have a bevy of matches for you. The first match of the evening. Yes, this was me, the Techno Blue Ranger. Versus some guy named Diamondback Jack Maverick. Again, much more traditional, not so much fun loving wrestler. Likes a very traditional style, whereas I am the master of the Spanish fly. One of the best moves in pro wrestling next to Starship Pain. The next match we have on the card is. Can you actually read these notes? No wonder he's a hobo of collecting aluminum. We have a street, a backstage brawl between the Cuba Connection and the Lucha Dragons. I wonder how they officiate that. That's, that's weird. I don't understand that. The next match we have is a good versus evil match. It features Gigi Heather, Goody Goody Heather, who is the current bestest girlfriend ever champion, and Princess Ikoshi versus Mistress Heather. And, oh wow, making her in-ring debut. It is heel Becky Lynch. That should be good. So you have a good versus evil match. Then the next match you have, you, you have, ooh, this is a doozy. The most evil male wrestler. And that includes Evil Tom. I wonder if he's related to Hobo Tom. The Undertaker, who of course has the powers of darkness. Kane! Of course, burns his whole family alive, an arsonist. And then you have the cult leader, Bray Wyatt. So you have a fatal four-way to see who's the most evil man. And there is something here about an altercation between Hobo and Tom. Maybe that's where he is right now. And this is in Spanish. El Vagabundo Dos Hobo. I don't know, but that's that's kind of the the card for tonight. Again, again, according to his notes, it says like, share, comment, subscribe, and you can also email at hobo and girlfriend at gmail dot com. And again, he promises some special video tribute to those who actually do. I am the Techno Blue Ranger. 
I would like to thank you for watching this show. I think he's going to post another video because it is Halloween. It's time to make that most honored Halloween tradition of all. The heck? A Philadelphia-style cheesesteak. Good stuff. How would I eat a cheesesteak with this, though? Thanks. Thank you guys for watching. Again, enjoy the show. And according to... Yes, and welcome to the Havoc-filled Halloween. I am the Techno Blue Ranger. This is my first match I'm ever having here, and I don't know what league this is. But I'm here in a wrestling match because it's Halloween. And, of course, when it's Halloween, you have to dress up. And wait a second, who is this curmudgeon coming out now? Oh, this is obviously a person who does not like to have fun. A very basic wrestler. Diamondback Jack Maverick. Again, very upset that I'm in. Again, I wrestle with all my gear on because I don't know when I'm going to be called on to save the planet again. Because I am the Techno Blue Ranger. In the background, you might hear a little bit more of my Halloween techno music because it is a Havoc-filled Halloween special here on... This guy's YouTube channel, I think his name is Hobo Tom. I don't know what he does for a living. I, I guess he collects aluminum. But this guy just looks like mean and bored and pissed off and a grumpy curmudgeon. So we shall see how this match goes. The fans like him, I guess. Standing Spanish Live! All over the house! Superstars looking for a victory, looking to build momentum. You're right about that. Momentum is so important in a match like this. Well, that missed him all right. Hey, did you look before firing? What an idiot. Back between the ropes. Let's see if we can keep it between the ropes. We've had enough of this on the floor action. I'm not comfortable with her at this point for me. That's how you move up the ladder here in WWE. Smart mat based wrestling. And here's the nerve cover. Oh, Look at these two giving it their all. There's absolutely no quit in them tonight. Spanish flies for everyone. Uh oh. Uh, going to the top. High risk. Watch out. Boy, he just got laid out. Wow. 
one of these guys is going to walk away with a win here tonight. I just can't imagine one of them also accepting the oh. oh. Ouch. Inside the ring now. Finally. Let's get this done inside the ring. Not this. He's looking at it again. Oh, such classic Matt wrestling by Diamondback Jack Maverick. This has actually been a fairly fun match so far. I can't believe it. Wow, that was good. It was actually rather exciting. The traditional Matt wrestler, I guess, always wins, folks. takes out some equipment. Oh, this is a freaking brawl. Wait a second, this isn't a match. This is just a freaking... Kara quite realizes that this is just a brawl. They just got jumped. Oh. 
Oh! Jeez, that was quick. What's up with the Cuban connection? They jumped the Lucha Dragons from behind, but they could not get the job done. Wow. No moss, no moss. Oh, that's right. Yeah, she, she is the bestest girlfriend ever champion. I just realized that. She's like, yes, I am the bestest and I get the grandest entrance. And look at that amazing title I ha she has. She just comes out so plain like. Jeez, that belt's still huge on her. Heather. Gigi Heather. I don't recall the last time I saw her look as focused as she looks here tonight. She knows she's in a fight, good versus evil. Oh, wow, it says Goody Goody Heather on the title. That's so awesome. I never realized that they had nameplates. That's so cool. You know, flower on the one side, silhouette, a big heart with a little design in the middle. What time is it? Wow, this is flying by. She won that belt? I forgot all about that. I forgot she had the belt. Why did I do that? Jeez, I must have been really bored that day. Oh, here's when I first set things up. Wait, what's this? Oh, good versus even. <laughs> Still one of my best creations. Mistress. Oh, Jeez, with the thigh high boots on. <laughs> and of course, I forget if she's SmackDown champion in this game. We have, because she is the heel, we have evil Becky Lynch. Or heel Becky, because heel Becky is best Becky. As evident by her, her, her beating down on Charlotte. Wow, this is an old game. Oh, 
like her outfit though, better. I don't know. I'm just silly. Evil Beck. True good versus evil. Sango, evil moves fast, but good moves faster. Good to not move faster then. Back in the ring now. Yeah, let's just see how long they can keep it in the ring. And she's back in the ring now. Yeah, very good. Nothing good happens out on that floor. This might not end well. Oh, the forces of good are so powerful. Let's try to do differently at this stage to stay in this thing. You know, this match can still go either way. 
It's just too early to call it. And you know what? I would have it no other way. Wait a minute. I think she escapes the hole. And there's the count. Figuring out what that can't be enough, can it? No, I don't think so. Oh, uh, look out. She just retarded that time. Yeah, I guess you could say she was just a bit off the mark with that one. Stay down! Stay down! Uh-oh. Here we go! Here we go! Now that's how you make a statement. Finally, a good match. Good long match, too, at that. Nobody home there. Nobody home? Home? That looks like the house has been empty for months. Oh, there goes the Spanish announce table. I recall the last time I've seen these demons look more focused than they do here tonight. Taking a bit of a beating so far, but nothing that can't be overcome. Good Lord, that wasn't even close. So that's what it's like being so far off the mark. You don't want to get caught outside the ring for too long. What happened to you? You used to love being outside the ring. WWE fans watching this match all around the world. We want to say hi to them all over the country. Even Manila, where I used to live. Manila's not a country. Here she comes. Look out. Oh, look at the emotion. Oh, look at the emotion. Tag is made. Yet another one for the highlight reel. She's 
clearly not getting paid by the hour. What a wild attempt at striking your opponent. I don't know if she could have been further off the mark. <laughs> that was like a haymaker. Like she was taking that big home run swing. She can end it here. Yes, sir. Avoids the impact there. The tag is made. Looking for the win. There's no coming back from that. Attacking from the top. Get some air here. I need some too after sitting next to you. I just can't get over what we saw. That was so great. She's putting the entire Divas roster on notice here. Each of these competitors is looking for the slightest hit of weakness in the other. Well, that's a strategy you have to always have in the cover rehearsal. She's in trouble now. Well, it looks like it's the end of the road for her. Regardless, people will look back on this night and tell stories to their grandkids about it. They should do it right there. I think this thing's over. This has been a long match. This has been fun. Finally, a good match. I can't believe everything that's transpired thus far. It's been years of trouble. Oh, uh, look out. She missed her target that time. Yeah, I guess you could say she was just a bit off the mark with that one. What a move! And the tide seems to be changing once again. I'm having a hard time figuring out what they're going to do next. Me too. I've given up even trying to figure out what they're going to do next. I'm just sitting back watching and enjoying. Look at this! Could it be? It 
So win a match. That was a great match though. Shoot. Evil evil is better than good. You know what I think that means? I think that means that Becky Lynch in the next milestone match gets a shot at the bestest girlfriend belt because oh that's right, she did pin her. Oh wow, Becky gets a title shot. That shouldn't be interesting. The most evil. Oh, who's this? Yes.
Oh, it's not even 2 o'clock yet. Those first two matches were way too quick. Dude, I don't know how I made them. That was weird. I just hope their entrances are quick. Oh, not his though. Shoot, I forgot how long his was. So you have someone that just calls himself evil, you have Kane, who of course burned everyone alive, you have Bray Wyatt now, who's a cult leader. I think I have just enough space for the Undertaker's entrance. And of course you have the man who has the powers of darkness behind him, so... Good though, it's only two o'clock. I ain't two o'clock yet. The deleter of worlds. Where is Bray Wyatt? That was fun between him and Matt Hardy. Jeez, The Undertaker has the longest freaking entrance of them all. Yeah, I'm just gonna let this go until five, four, three, two, one. We've all seen The Undertaker's entrance before, I think. There we go. This is to determine the most evil. Take a wild 
sway with that one. Right. That was wild indeed. Executed perfectly. And check out the look of satisfaction. Oh, who's busted open already? Uh, he's obviously hoping to hit. Oh, look at that. He managed to get a shoulder up. But like they say, Cole, timing is everything. Wow, can't believe the Undertaker got out of that one. And he's heading back in. I can't blame him. Nothing good is going to happen out here on the floor. Look at Kane. It's coming. I'm the eater of the world. Whoa! Oh, wait a second. What's this I see? Give me that. You know what, this is going to set up, folks. This is... Boom! That was actually pretty fun. That was like just a big smosh. Boom! The Undertaker's a bloody mess! Dude, is that bone you saw?
I stepped right over him. I'm coming back for my belt. Jeez, that was quick. Hello and welcome once again to the Hobo Cooking Channel. My name is Hobo Tom. You probably know I am Hobo Tom because I look like a hobo. Today it is Halloween. So again, you probably enjoyed the Havoc of Halloween YouTube special I put on. And I'm just getting home from work. You know what that means, folks. It's time for dinner. Tonight is going to be a very special course. I do not do this. I only do this really, I think for Halloween, and that is I make Philadelphia-style cheesesteaks. If you have anything other than a hot griddle and thinly sliced steak like I'm going to show you, you're a one jive talking turkey, because you're just having a, just a regular steak and cheese, but this is a Philly-style cheesesteak. The first thing you have to do, you have to have a hot griddle, a little hot griddle pan, and you have to get it nice and warm um, with my cheesesteak. Let's see here. Get my plate ready. Shall so stick this over here. My kitchen's a little bit of a mess. And my bread, you need nice long bread, preferably Italian. And with my cheese, I'm gonna have some onion rings. So this way, in case any silly customers that gives me any nonsense tomorrow, it's a belch full of onion bread. And because this is the only meal I've had all day long, turn the bake on. Set that to about 4.40. Start. Get a nice hot griddle. Some delicious whole onion ring slices this time. So, so this is a good stuff for a change. And it is Halloween. It's time for something special. I'll have a very special onion mix. So here my grill is finally getting warm. Again, you need to have that hot griddle or it's not going to cook right. So you take, always take a nice fresh loaf of bread. If it is frozen, it's okay. Just make sure it comes up to room temperature. Ooh, I need to spread the onion rings out. Onion rings go in the oven. Take the bread out. Let's slice that bread. Nice sharp knife. And the bread should have actually a fairly firm consistency. You don't have to butter it and or grill it. As long as it's a nice firm crust, it'll hold the cheesesteak material and get enough. Again, you want that fold. If you cut it in half, you are some jive talking tricky that's only making a steak and cheese. You want it to fold. The first thing you always put on any proper Philadelphia style cheesesteak. Again, if not, you're just making some kind of nonsense thing. That you want nice, thin sliced beef. You guys are seeing that. And that's, this is very typical of any Philly style cheesesteak. Again, anything else is steak and cheese. I'm just going the water a little bit. I'll be back and forth. Another important ingredient, and this is a little bit up to date as to the totality of it, but to me, you cannot have a Philly cheesesteak without. What I think is a key ingredient peppers and onions. You need to have some peppers and onions. Again, you need to have those fresh sliced. You want them nice, toast. Nice and crisp, get all the water out. So you can hear that sizzle. Oh, so good sounding. And I'm gonna put a lot on because I'm gonna fill up the sandwich. So generally what I do with this size griddle, the top half will just be the peppers and onions. And you want a really good healthy quality on. I want those steam a little bit. 
something very important because part of the joy of the Philly cheesesteak, and you always put this stuff back in the freezer, so it's good for a while. There. Again, whenever you're handling different food products, always wash your hands. And so with that going, ooh, I just crushed an onion. And then you can start, and you can make this in however many stages you want to. All you very simply do is take a good solid chunk portion, fry enough. Filling is half a cheesesteak. And I'll do this kind of in two batches. So you again have your nice thinly shredded beef. And your peppers and onions cooking. Again, just wash your hands a little bit between food products. And the key is normally I like to have the cheese cold, but that's not how they serve it in Philadelphia. They serve their cheese melty style. Again, very simply just use provolone cheese. Make sure I'm at two minutes. You want to have kind of a couple spatulas again. You'll be able to turn this on every so often. You can already see, because it's thinly sliced, it really doesn't take that long to cook. This is why it's Philly cheesesteak's really almost a street food type thing. It's one of those things you can make very quickly. And again, do the same thing. It doesn't matter if the meat gets involved with the veggies, even though you're not supposed to do it. The veggies actually cool down fairly quickly. And just rotate the vegetables. And the only reason you do that is that so you keep things from not overcooking and being burnt and toasted. But again, you just want to warm things up. Again, you're going to use about really half the vegetables when you start to turn this. Again, every so often, just give the meat a quick little flip, kind of separate it out. Again, you've probably seen many times there'll be people actually do this two-handed. That was a little special in here. Nope, I do have this. Again, anything. And you want to kind of shred it out there, pull apart. Again, they'll be using two spatulas at a time. A lot of this. Again, you can see the cheesesteak part's actually almost really cooked. Again, so it's going to be a, probably a couple more minutes. Yeah, and you do not want to serve undercooked beef. That is very bad. So I'm just going to let this cook for a few more minutes. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to get the cheese kind of ready. Because again, this is a Philly style cheesesteak. And I'm going to have on kind of a second cooking surface. Kind of a holding area. So I'm going to move my little Dishy you hold your things over. Into the depths of the cooking drawer. Or the bread warmer pan. That's the again, you have a nice little surface layer to cook. And you can see how well that's turning out. So pause it. Sweet, and I deleted enough videos where I can do this now. So again, as you can tell, my beef for the most part is really cooked through. Again, it's very thinly sliced. It's not going to take long. There's, there's always going to be some kind of little red spots. And just make sure you get those on the pan as quick as you can. But because I'm going to do this in two steps, I'm going to take half of, about half of my pe cooked peppers and onions and begin to integrate those with the beef part. So again, that's what makes it a little bit different. So about half my peppers and onions, I want to keep kind of that to one side. Again, as long as the oven's not, you're not really cooking stuff too much. And this kind of marries all the flavor to everything. Um, depending on your tastes, I like to use just a little bit of just some seasoning. You can use salt, pepper, just a little seasoning. And I like to kick it up just a little bit with some red pepper flavor. And your cheese steak's looking nice and melt, looking nice and ready again. All that beef is ready. This is where the idea of the real cheese steak comes in. You do not put the cold cheese on, but you put provolone on top. And if this was a street style cheese steak, you'd actually use yellow cheese sauce. 
and put the steak on. But again, this is more of a restaurant style. And traditionally, what I've seen done And I can use this for it. So to help that things melt a little bit more, very simply, all you do is kind of cover it. And it traps all that steam and all that deliciousness in there. Now just be careful because the only thing about covering it is that that pan eventually is going to be very hot. And it's not one of those things you really want to touch with your bare hands. You're going to need to use a pad or, like they do in Philadelphia, you use your cooking apparatus. And you'll see what your cheesesteak looks like very shortly. Again, lift the pan up. You see where that steam is being hit? So good and delicious. That steam for a couple more, more seconds. And we'll take a look at, see how the onion rings are going. They look good in there. Yeah, I'm also preparing a little beverage for myself. It is Halloween, and in Mexico it's El Dia de Muerta. So again, we're going to have some rum. Five more minutes left on the studio. Put this back here, going to have some rum. Should almost be done. Nice frosty wine glass. You can see it's nice, full of ice. And it says Happy Halloween. Yes, I got that at a local store. And so again, this pan's gonna be hot. So again, never touch that with your hands. Be a man. Use that. And again, you can see all the steam that came off. You know, it's gonna be really hot. Put that there. This is your cheesesteak part. This is what gives Philadelphia cheesesteaks its uniqueness, we're right here. So again, I like to do it so that way I get nothing on the floor. It again, it doesn't have to be the neatest thing, that's why I have this extra pan to help. Again, if you're at a restaurant, they have kind of specialized pans. And again, since I am trying to fill up this whole pan, or this whole bread, again, you can see it's about halfway through. So again, I still have my peppers and onions kind of cooking. It's still steaming. Some cheese, you're always going to be messy. Cheese are born messy. I put the rest of my, again, thinly shred beef. There, as much as you think you can. I mean, you're never always going to get all of it. But again, if you can get most of it, that's a pretty good thing. Again, so I, had, I picked already about three quarters of it. Well, the rest of that tip, if you're a man like me, you can kind of use your hands just a little bit. You have to be kind of careful. You don't want to burn yourself. Then, after handling all product, you wash your hands. I'm not going to fill in kind of the rest of the cheese there because I'm going to have to cut. Over here, we're going to have set drink. Yes! In the Malibu rum. Nice little frosty ice cold glass. Again, the cheese sticks still cooking. And again, different countries celebrate Halloween differently. I think in Mexico, it's more properly referred to as the Day of the Dead. So again, you can get this kind of at your local Bravo. It's colita. It actually comes from Venezuela. I guess it's like Venezuelan cola. And um, for some reason, the Malibu rum seems, seems to go to the bottom. So in order to mix it properly, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and it's going to foam up. It is a little cola-ish. Then the Malibu rum, rum goes in. And one, two, three, four, five, six. You can see nothing. There are no layers. And just top off with the rest of it.
and a nice little Halloween drink. So, so that means beep, 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 that's done. So I'm going to pause this and we'll come back to it once I'm done with my cheese egg. And I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so we're all done. Remember, your cheese egg's not going to be perfectly uniform. That's kind of the joy of it. So you have this nice kind of semi-unevenness. The... Let's see here, put this back. Onion rings are actually all done. So now it's time for plating and presentation. Then always wear your hot glove. Protect yourself at all times. Or better make commands at all times. Ooh, that was steamy. So again, just like with any good quality food, and the reason why you don't cut it in half is that you can literally fold it over. Use a nice sharp knife. Just kind of poke everything back in there. And you should always cut it in half. And diagonal. And if it was a good cheese steak again, you see very little come out. Again, plating is somewhat important. I'll show you everything that's all nice and all fixed up looking nice together. And be consistent with your product. Over here, again, I've already used the one thing for meat and veggies. In the sink they go. Let's wash one off. And anything on here, you're always going to have some scraps. It's okay just to kind of toss them on. Remember, it's cooked, so it's already done. Onion rings. From the center. Let's get a little pile. Again, the fresher cut looking, the better. A lot better than the kind of processed looking onion rings. These actually look like full onion onions at least. Again, different parts of Philadelphia, you'll have cheese fries again with yellow sauce. Some will actually melt the mozzarella, melt mozzarella cheese. And let's show you what the presentation should finally look like. So that's all set. Again, make sure everything's off. Don't start oven fires. That's bad. Oh, look at that deliciousness. And you can see the cheese steak is all nice and greasy. And now I don't like the toasted bread. What the heck happened there? You know what that means, folks. i finish off. There must be a goblin in the house or something. Very last thing, because I think my battery's almost exhausted. Very last thing, because I think my battery's almost exhausted. Very last thing, because I think my battery's almost exhausted. Very last thing, because I think my battery's almost exhausted. Very last thing, because I think my battery's almost exhausted. Very last thing, because I think my battery's almost exhausted. Very last thing, because I think my battery's almost.